Taking a look at the front of the box, we can see that the box actually follows the same sort of styling and design that Gigabyte have used on many other boards, including the X58 USB 3 and some of the 1156 boards as well. It's all the same styling with this white box, Gigabyte logo, and lots of information on the 333 onboard acceleration. It basically means it has USB 3.0, fantastic feature, USB Power 3X and SATA 3.0 as well. It does tell us that it has a 2 times copper PCB, ultra durable 3, which is basically some features that Gigabyte like to include on their board, including this improved copper PCB and what sort of transistors, solid capacitors, that kind of thing that the board actually uses. Because it is an AMD Fusion board, it has got the AMD Vision logo here, DirectX 11 support, and Dolby Home Theatre. And of course, it's the E350N USB 3. We can also see that if we turn the box around, on the back, naturally, is where you'd find all of the information on sort of the features in a little bit more detail. So we can see, firstly, we have the USB 3.0, and it just gives a comparison between USB 3.0 and USB 2.0 and how much faster it is which is up to 10 times super speed USB power 3x we can see once again a small sort of chart showing that the on off charge features and SATA 3.0 also talks about how this board is ultra durable ultra safe and has ultra performance when you look at sort of overclocking it and things like that so let's open it up and see what comes included on the top we get the motherboard now we have to stress that this is a review sample and because it's a review sample it doesn't come with all of the features that the final product will um, in regards to the accessories and the way that it's packaged so the motherboard just comes on its own so we'll have a look at that in a minute if we take the cardboard packaging out we can see that inside we have two serial ATA cables of which all of them have metal clips on and one of them is actually right angled which is a nice little feature and we also have a driver installation disc which is actually on a DVD minus R. Now that is purely because of what we said in regards to uh, the way that review samples are sometimes sent out but generally you'd find that you'd have the SATA cables, driver installation, installation guide, uh, IO panel shield plate and much much more but as said we've only got what comes included so let's take a little look at the motherboard the first thing that you'll notice about the motherboard is that it uses the mini ITX form factor. Just putting my hand on top, you can see it's not really much bigger. Um, if you remember the Asus Fusion board that we looked at, it was a micro ATX board. So it was slightly bigger, so they could incorporate a few more features in regards to the expansion slots and things like that. But this does use the mini ITX form factor. And as you can see, just sort of looking down at the I.O. plate, the cooler doesn't really protrude over the top. So it's quite low profile when you look at it. The colour scheme is what we've seen on many Gigabyte boards in the past in regards to the blue colour scheme that this follows. We can see if we turn this around, there is quite a, a chunky heatsink cooler on here with a fan that doesn't once again protrude out the top. It does just sort of stay in regards to uh, how high the actual cooler is. We can see that it connects over here to a fan header. There are two fan headers on this board, the first one being the CPU fan header here and a system fan header just down here. But to be honest, these are quite low profile and uh, they are quite low heat um, production. So you shouldn't really need mass amounts of cooling anyway. Hence why there is only one extra fan header. You can see that there are two memory ports on here, which does support DDR3, um, 1066 and 1333. All depends on sort of how you're going to be running the onboard AMD Fusion processor or APU as to what memory you're really going to use, whether you're going to be overclocking, that kind of thing. So other little features of this board that we can see, there are four serial ATA ports over here which supports SATA 6 gigabit per second, so nice and fast. It's going to be fantastic for um, sort of HTPC server uses to access that data really, really quickly. Um, we can also see that there is a PCI Express lane here. It's a PCI Express X16 slot that operates at X4 speed, so to be honest, it could be used for a uh, standalone graphics card, but to be honest, if you are going to use it for graphics, to be honest, you might as well just, the whole purpose of Fusion is to use the integrated graphics. So if it was me, which I'm going to be using this board most likely for a HTPC, I'd be using the integrated graphics that the APU has got, and then I'd be finding a PCI Express TV card from the likes of Hopog um, or some of the other well-known brands out there, Compro, people like that. Nice, uh, discreet, 
TV card, low profile, slot into that slot into that space and uh, off you go. Perfect home theatre PC. We can see that all the front panel connectors are down here for your power switches, power LED and things like that. We can also see that up this end are the audio SP diff headers. And just turn this around a little bit more, you can see that there's two headers here for USB. Now, this has got USB 3, but it doesn't mean that these headers operate at USB 3. They actually operate at USB 2.0 and 1.1. So if you are expecting mass amounts of USB ports, then you are going to be um, quite let down in regards to USB 3. Obviously, there are some on the back, which we will talk about when we look at the I.O. panel, but with all motherboards of today, it is these two on their actual headers that support USB 2.0 and not USB 3.0. You generally have to loop the cable back through an expansion slot and then into the rear I.O. Looking at the power on this board, because that is one of the main features of it, it does use relatively low amounts of power. We can see that there is a standard ATX 24 pin power adapter here. And in the usual space in the top right, we can see that there's a four pin power connector here. So that's it really for the features that is included on this board, apart from one other little header that we'd like to talk to you about, which you don't generally see on motherboards lately, is this one here. Now next to this it does say CI. Now that actually stands for Chassis Intrusion. Now I've got a Thermaltake DH202, and in regards to that it has got a Chassis Intrusion alarm, but the boards I've been using in it haven't had a Chassis Intrusion header so this is going to be perfect for my uses in case I get a little bit worried that someone's going to break into my case and start messing about with the internals this will alert uh, the person when they try to go into it so now let's have a quick look at the rear IO panel on this motherboard firstly before we start talking about the rear IO from this angle uh, on the camera you should be able to see how low profile this is so you can see how high the rear IO panels are and if we just come across doesn't even touch the cooler. The cooler is very, very low profile. And to be honest, this fan can be taken off. There are four screws, so if you do decide that it gets a little bit noisy over time, you may decide to take that fan off. But I'll be honest, I was a little bit dubious when I first saw this because the last time I had a fan of that size in a computer was back on an old DFI LAN party, and it did give up the ghost not long after I'd actually bought it because it started making a whining noise. Obviously, the smaller the fan, the more whiny it gets and it does break down but so far and we have only sort of used this quite briefly this fan is still going it's silent can't hear a thing so it's perfect so now looking at the rear IO panel we can see that we have a combination PS2 mouse and keyboard port there are two USB 2 ports here a VGA port DVI port and HDMI port as I said this is perfect for HTPC purposes so if you are going to use it for that you know, you've got full flexibility and connectivity of exactly what you want, whether it's VGA, DVI or HDMI. We're going to be using this in a HTPC purpose um, at a later date. And because of that, we're going to be hooking up some Z5500s via optical, which is fantastic because it has got an optical port just here. USB 3, that's the whole name of the board. It's the E350N USB 3, and it would be lost if it didn't have USB 3. So there's two USB 3 headers here headers, ports, however, whatever you want to call them. There are another two USB ports here. These are USB 2.0 ports. And you can tell the difference because these ones are black, these ones are black, yet the USB 3 are blue. You can also see that there is a LAN port up here. And then if for some reason you're not using the digital optical SPDIF audio, you can use the standard analog audio over, over here. I hope that gives you a bit more insight as to what this motherboard is about, what sort of features it has, because to be honest, a lot of people would be thinking, oh, I wish it had this, I wish it had that, but for a mini ITX form factor that has got an integrated GPU underneath this cooler, it's fantastic what they've actually managed to squeeze onto this board. And if you want to see the benchmarks and sort of further testing of what we've actually done with this motherboard, head over to etechnics.com. If you're watching this on YouTube, you can click on the description box and the link is there. Head over to there, you'll be able to see exactly how this board performs and then you can tell us whether you'd buy it or not.